Welcome, dear listeners, to the Softly Spoken Science Podcast. I'm your host, the Softly Spoken Science Nerd, bringing you bedtime stories calculated to raise your knowledge level. This podcast is dedicated to the belief that a good, calm science talk will put you right to sleep. Tonight, we are returning to the Dinosaur Society's Dinosaur Encyclopedia by Don Lessam and Donald Glutt. This book was published in 1993, just after we knew dinosaurs were warm-blooded, just before we knew they had feathers. If this interests you, or puts you to sleep, hit like and subscribe now, and tap the little bell to be notified about the next video. In this episode, we will review encyclopedia entries from Cotosaurus through Mutaburosaurus, discussing dinosaur evolution, reviewing the best paleo art, and updating the science since 1993. Cotosaurus yamanpaliensis. Cotosaurus was one of the most primitive of all known sauropods. Cotosaurus is indeterminate in many respects between sauropods and their smaller cousins, the prosauropods, who sometimes still walked on two legs. Some of its hip bones are shaped like those of prosauropods, but some pelvic bones are also elongated like sauropods. Cotosaurus was also much larger than any prosauropod. It had weak spoon-shaped teeth like the sauropod Camarasaurus and vertebrae shaped like those of other sauropods. 840 pieces, amounting to the remains of at least 12 individuals, were recovered in the late 1970s near the village of Yamanpali in Telangana, India. Critosaurus navahovius Notable for its Roman nose, this duckbill had a wide, flat head with a distinct bump over its nose. It was named on the basis of a skull found in 1904 by American Museum of Natural History collector Barnum Brown. The name means separated lizard in reference to the cheekbones as originally discovered, but is often mistranslated noble lizard in reference to the Roman nose. For most of the time since Critosaurus was discovered, it has been questionably lumped or split with its closest relatives, Gryposaurus and Hadrosaurus. This is what a normal scientific debate looks like when researchers follow the evidence where it leads. Creationists, as I was growing up, are not doing that. They are determined to see as few different kinds of dinosaurs as possible in order for two of each kind to fit in their Kentucky tourist attractions. As a creationist, I believed there was common ancestry between Critosaurus and Gryposaurus, probably between Critosaurus and Lambiosaurus, but I was in denial that all of the above share common ancestry with Mutaburosaurus, because Mutaburosaurus is even more closely related to Iguanodon. And if you have to admit there's common ancestry between Critosaurus and Iguanodon, then you might as well just admit evolution is true. Lambiosaurus lambi. Lambiosaurus was a large duck-billed dinosaur distinguished by a hollow crest atop its head. The crest had the general shape of a plow with a long narrow spike at the back. The shape varied individually by age and sex. The crest housed paired canals that connected with the nostrils. They may have had a function in the sense of smell or in sound production. Either would have significant survival value in alerting individuals and groups to danger, mainly tyrannosaurs. Portions of fossilized skin impressions in some specimens show a thin skin with uniform polygonal impressions arranged in no particular order on the neck, sides, and tail. Lambiosaurus was closely related to the slightly older Carithosaurus, as well as Hypacrosaurus and Allurotitan. Laelanosaura amicographica. This little plant eater, no bigger than a baby kangaroo, belongs to the Hypsilophodontidae a family of primitive bipedal plant eaters. Laelanosaura differs from the other Hypsilophodonts in having an upper hind leg bone that narrows from front to back at the base, and, unlike all the Hypsilophodonts except Othnelia, Laelanosaura has ridges on both sides of the upper cheek teeth. From a study of part of its brain case, paleontologists determined that this dinosaur was one of the largest brained yet known, with well-developed optic lobes. Its large eyes would have served it well in winter. Australia was within the Antarctic Circle in Laelanosaurus' time, which meant months of darkness every winter. You can see how I scratched out the name Laelanosaurus 
and wrote first Tipsilophodon, then scratched that out and replaced it with Othnelia. As a creationist, I was in the process of lumping all dinosaurs, species, families, and genera into as few imaginable kinds as possible, in order that two of every kind might fit on Noah's cargo ship together. With the creationist agenda governing my imagination, Laelinosaura became Hypsilophodon, and after I learned that Othnelia, another Hypsilophodont, had been found first, Hypsilophodon became Othnelia. It wasn't until college, Bible college in fact, that I finally learned better. Nothing in biology makes sense except in light of evolution, and nothing in geology makes sense as long as you pretend the answers are in Genesis. Leptoceratops gracilis Leptoceratops was a small horned dinosaur. Though it was one of the last of such dinosaurs, it was also very primitive, having a large head without a nasal horn. Like all its close relatives, Leptoceratops had a parrot-like beak. It was distinguished from others by its small overall size, long, moderately low face, very small solid frill, and crest with high thin ridge and smooth back. Though its teeth had single roots, its jaws were powerful plant grinders. Its lower jaw was massive, short and deep, with fewer than 15 rows of teeth. The first three digits on its front foot made a hoof. Its hind feet retained their claws. Its tail was long, with high slender spines. Though Leptoceratops is usually portrayed as partially bipedal, the concentration of body mass in front of the pelvis, the broad short hoofed hands, and the straight shafted upper hind leg bones were adaptations for moving on all fours. Lightly built for a horned dinosaur, it was probably among the swiftest of the four-footed dinosaurs. Leptoceratops is the most primitive known protoceratopsid, and yet one of the longest surviving. Leptoceratops shows us what the ancestors of Triceratops looked like. It retained their generalized form, and lived later alongside its specialized relatives. Often we see this in evolution, where an older ancestral form survives alongside younger, more specialized forms because it is more generalized, more adaptable, and more resilient. A specialized form, such as Triceratops, is able to unlock greater and greater success as long as environmental conditions are improving. But the generalized form is more adaptable under pressure, uses less energy, reproduces faster, and therefore is more resilient when times are hard. Unfortunately for Leptoceratops, it was neither generalized enough nor resilient enough to survive the end of the Cretaceous. If you admit there's common ancestry between Leptoceratops and Protoceratops, do you admit their family includes Triceratops and Styracosaurus? Lesothosaurus Diagnosticus Lesothosaurus was one of the earliest and most primitive Ornithischians. We now know it was probably an omnivore capable of scavenging as well as hunting small mammals and lizards. Thanks to a bone bed of Lesothosaurus discovered in 2016, its anatomy is much better known today than it was in 1993. Its body was small, lightly built, slender and without armor. Its head, about 10 centimeters long, was triangular in profile and had large eyes. Lesothosaurus had a long snout with a horn-covered tip that probably functioned as a beak to crop vegetation. Its lower jaws were slender and its varied teeth were arranged in a simple row. Lesothosaurus had short forelimbs, less than 40% the length of the hind limbs. Its thumb was particularly opposable, suggesting it may have had some grasping ability. The small thumb spike, which was held well off the ground during walking, may have been accompanied by four short fingers ending in small claws. The tail may have been about equal to the combined length of the head, neck, and trunk. Lesothosaurus was probably an agile, two-legged runner. Virtually every part of its skeleton was well adapted to that life. Slender, hollow, thin-walled bones, a pelvis set above the belly to allow freedom of leg movement, a light skull with many openings, a short neck and forelimbs, delicately constructed vertebrae, and the absence of armor. Lilian Sternus Lilian Sterni Lillian Sternus is a late Triassic dinosaur with features similar to the Coelophysids, the smaller Coelophysis and the larger Dilophosaurus, as well as the Noasaurid Ceratosaurs, such as Elaphrosaurus and Masiacosaurus. Lillian Sternus has been speculatively reconstructed with a small crest modeled after Dilophosaurus. 
Like the earliest theropods, Lillian Sternus still had five fingers, although its fourth and fifth digits were reduced, as they are on Eoraptor, Coelophysis, and Dilophosaurus. Theropod dinosaurs in general reduced their arms, and except for ceratosaurs, most of them reduced their fingers from five down to three or two. When I was a creationist trying to minimize the total number of dinosaurs, all this was problematic. Not because small theropods themselves were too big to fit on Noah's cargo ship, but because their common ancestry is too big. When young Earth creationists look at small theropods, they are forced by superficial resemblances to lump together very distantly related animals with all different numbers of fingers, from Eoraptor to Herrerasaurus, Coelophysis, Dilophosaurus, Lilian Sternus, Monolophosaurus, and Compsognathus. On the basis of superficial similarities, you can lump Dilophosaurus with Lilian Sternus and Monolophosaurus, but then you'll be forced to lump Eoraptor with Coelophysis, and both of them with Compsognathus, and then you'll have to lump Compsognathus with small tyrannosaurs, such as Dilong and Proceratosaurus. You'd have to believe large tyrannosaurs and small tyrannosaurs were not related to each other, but small tyrannosaurs and Compsognathids definitely were. The very same people who deny evolution on geologic timescales over millions and billions of years are nevertheless forced to pretend all dinosaur diversity evolved from just a few common ancestors in less than 2,000 years. Lufengosaurus Hinai Lufengosaurus was a large early plant eater, a prosauropod closely related to Plateosaurus. Its skull was small, with a large circular eye hole. Its jaw had serrated teeth, its neck was long, its spine strongly constructed, its back legs stubby, and its tail massive. The first claws of both its front and hind feet were especially strong. Since 1993, Lufengosaurus is still sometimes considered a member of Plateosauridae, although some cladistic analyses now find it to be a member of Massospondylidae instead. Of course, when I was a creationist, I thought Plateosaurus and Massospondylus were the same animal. I thought all varieties of prosauropods were less different from one another than different breeds of dogs are today, separated from their common ancestor by less than 2,000 years, and I thought all the scientists in the world were in a conspiracy to cover it up. Magyarosaurus dacus Magyarosaurus was a titanosaurid, a group of armor-skinned, plant-eating sauropods known mostly from South America. Magyarosaurus is distinguished by its slender limbs, its name, given by early 20th century paleontologist Baron von Nopsha, was intended to embrace various remains from the Upper Cretaceous period found in Transylvania that were originally referred to Titanosaurus. Today, Magyarosaurus is known as one of the smallest adult sauropods. Myasaura peoplesorum. Myasaura was one of the so called flat headed hadrosaurs. This was a diverse subfamily of duckbills that flourished during the late Cretaceous. The remarkable details we know about this animal's appearance, behavior, and development are the result of extensive work done by paleontologist John Horner and students. Myasaura had a long, wide face with a short, wide bill. Above and between the eyes was a small, solid crest resembling that of Lephorathon and Proserolophus. The massive muzzle shows primitive characteristics common to both iguanodonts and early hadrosaurs, including the skull's most significant features, the small nostril opening and the long, broad nasal bones at the front end of the muzzle. During the dry season, the mother made her nest on the flood plains using fine-grained silts, then laid her eggs in a spiral pattern. The nests were then covered with reeds and other vegetation for incubation. Trampled eggshells and regurgitated plant matter provide clues to this extended nest stay and to the parental feeding of the young. Babies may have been fed on berries and seeds regurgitated by the mother. Soft, unfinished cartilage on the joint surfaces of the very young dinosaurs would have prohibited them from much activity. They may have been 35 centimeters long when they hatched, growing to 3 meters by the end of the first year. Such rapid growth requires a high metabolism and supports the theory that dinosaurs had them. Majungasaurus crenatissimus. In 1993, when this dinosaur encyclopedia was written, little was known about the Abelosaurid family besides Carnotaurus. Today, we are starting to understand their history better. They were descendants of ceratosaurs, 
who lived in the southern continents, South America, Africa, and India during the Cretaceous period. By the end of that period, with tyrannosaurs absent from those continents and allosaurs in long decline, they were the apex predators. Today we know Majungasaurus did look much like Carnotaurus, although their skulls were quite different. Carnotaurus skull was unusual and specialized, whereas Majungasaurus skull was more generalized and more typical for Abelosaurs. Mementosaurus constructus The Mementosaurs are a fascinating family of sauropods with exceptionally long necks. The neck of Mementosaurus was about 11 meters long. In 1993, it was believed that Mementosaurus was an exotic Diplodocid, but today, Mementosauridae and Diplodocidae are believed to be quite distinct families. Their necks and tails were shaped somewhat like Diplodocus or Apatosaurus, but their legs were more like Camarasaurus, as were their skulls. When I was a creationist, I thought Apatosaurus, Diplodocus, and Mementosaurus were all the same. But then what about Camarasaurus? What about Cetiosaurus and Haplocanthosaurus? The only way these sauropods made sense was in light of evolution. Massospondylus carinatus. This animal was a prosauropod, one of a group of long-necked, mostly plant-eating dinosaurs that included the first large dinosaurs. Massospondylus is known from fossils found in Africa. Massospondylus' small head was narrow, with large, almost circular eye holes, large nostrils, and relatively large teeth. Some of its teeth were serrated, others flat. Its body resembled that of the other large prosauropods, with its long neck, front legs long enough to allow for some movement on all fours, and long tail. Since 1993, we've learned that prosauropods like Massospondylus grew steadily throughout their lifespans, with high metabolisms, high activity levels, and even high lung functions similar to birds. And with significantly less oxygen in the atmosphere during the Triassic, they needed it. Megalosaurus bucklandi Megalosaurus was a large carnivore and one of the first dinosaurs to be named and described. It thus became the key member of its family, the Megalosauridae, a group of large theropods with big heads, long jaws, double-edged teeth, shortened forelimbs, three-fingered hands, strong hind legs and feet with large talons. Megalosaurus may have resembled the better-known Allosaurus from western North America. It was thick-necked and had a robust upper arm. The lower arm bones were stout, and slightly more than half the length of the upper arm. Early conceptions of this dinosaur's appearance were dramatically misguided. It was pictured as a giant, elephantine, humpbacked lizard monster estimated at 21 meters long. Since its naming in 1824, much material, much of it unfounded, has been referred to Megalosaurus, making it become, over the years, a junk basket category for any large, little-known carnivorous dinosaur. As Megalosaurus itself was founded on fragmentary remains, comparing it with other dinosaurs is difficult at best. However, since 1993, the picture of Megalosaurus and its relatives has gotten a bit clearer. There is a certain family resemblance to Allosaurs, although various aspects of the anatomy are quite different. However, it's impossible to look at them together and miss the family resemblance. When I was a creationist in denial of evolution, I had to think Megalosaurus was just a weird species of Allosaurus, alongside Acrocanthosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and Metriacanthosaurus, all no more different from one another than different breeds of dogs are today. Less, in fact, since I believed there were only about 1,600 years from the creation to the flood in which they could reproduce. In order to fit dinosaurs on Noah's Ark, any number of dinosaurs, you need to minimize the number of distinct varieties as much as possible. You need to overlook as much diversity as possible. Therefore, you will end up classifying dinosaurs based on superficial similarities rather than fundamental differences. Melanorosaurus redi This large, early plant-eater established the family of Melanorosaurids, a group of large prosauropods that tended to walk on all fours. It had a small head, long neck, long tail, powerful legs, and sturdy bones. Although some Melanorosaurids were at least partially bipedal, this heavily built dinosaur probably walked on all fours. Melanorosaurus is the largest and heaviest of the known prosauropods. It bears a resemblance to the later sauropods. Melanorosaurids may have been either their cousins or their ancestors, but either way, they exemplify many evolutionary trends that multiple groups of sauropodomorphs underwent in parallel over the course of the Triassic and Jurassic. 
Mitriacanthosaurus parkeri. Mitriacanthosaurus, a large carnivore with a humped back, was originally believed to be a species of Megalosaurus. In 1993, it was still believed to be a Megalosaur. However, since 1993, it has been recognized with its own family of carnosaurs, more closely related to allosaurs than megalosaurs. Mitriacanthosaurus was distinguished by the high spines of its dorsal vertebrae. These spines were about 25 centimeters long, twice the length of the vertebrae. With the accompanying back muscles, they would have created a kind of humpback. It's perfectly normal for evolution that megalosaurs generally resemble allosaurs, and some allosaurs in particular resemble megalosaurs. Several million years ago, the ancestors of modern-day bears and dogs were much more closely related than they are now, and there were other lineages back then of both dog-like bears and bear-like dogs. The only way this is hard to imagine is if you are a creationist expecting every kind of animal to be unique and expecting two of every kind to fit on the same wooden boat together. Ninmi Paravertebra Ninmi was a notosaurid, an armored ankylosaur without a clubbed tail. It was unique in comparison with notosaurs from other continents. Ninmi was small, with unusual plated structures upon its body. A new word, paravertebra, was coined by its describer, paleontologist Ralph Molnar, in response to these structures. Ninmi is also distinguished for having the shortest dinosaur name. Well-preserved dinosaur skeletons from Australia are unusual, yet much of Ninmi was found in good shape, including small bony armor on the underside. Ninmi was the first ankylosaur found in Australia and is one of the only ankylosaurs known from the Southern Hemisphere. Its presence there in the early Cretaceous period offers evidence supporting the existence of a land route into Australia via South America. It also reflects the widespread distribution of ankylosaurs shortly after their original appearance in the late Jurassic period. Monolophosaurus Jiangjian Miyawai Monolophosaurus, a large theropod, had a big head which was distinguished by a crest above the snout and eyes. The crest may have had some display function. In 2024, we still don't know if Monolophosaurus was an allosaur, a megalosaur, a ceratosaur, or something else. In the Middle Jurassic, all these relationships were closer together. Despite uncertainty as to Monolophosaurus history and its relationships to its contemporaries around the world, this dinosaur's distinctive crest and striking overall appearance make it one of the most famous, most recognizable animals from the Mid-Jurassic. Monolophosaurus is one of the earliest members of a group of theropods known as Tetanurae, which all have their tails characteristically stiffened by tendons. Creationists trying to minimize the number of unique kinds of dinosaurs must decide if they think Monolophosaurus is its own kind, or if it must be lumped with Dilophosaurus, which is not even a Tetanurin. Dilophosaurus bears a superficial resemblance to Monolophosaurus and Cryolophosaurus, but their evolutionary relationships are rather distant. Dilophosaurus is neither a Tetanurin nor even a Ceratosaur, but it's closer to Coelophysis. Musaurus patagonicus The almost complete skeleton of Musaurus, a very young prosauropod, is small enough to fit in your cupped hands and is one of the smallest dinosaurs ever found. The skull measured just 3.2 centimeters in length, its upper leg bone only 30 millimeters, and its lower leg bone just 37. Adults were medium-sized prosauropods, measuring up to 8 meters long. Numerous specimens of varying age in a single locality suggest Musaurus lived a gregarious lifestyle. With this behavior possibly originating in the Triassic, it may have been important to the later success of sauropods and other dinosaurs. Mutaburosaurus landini Mutaburosaurus was a large plant eater with a flat snout. Its head was distinguished by a bump-like rise between its snout and eyes. This swelling may have enhanced the animal's sense of smell or amplified sound. This dinosaur's teeth, unlike those of Iguanodon and Camptosaurus, seem to have worked like a pair of shears. If you admit common ancestry between Mutaburosaurus and Iguanodon, you will have to admit common ancestry with all other ornithopods as well, from Critosaurus to Lambiosaurus, Rhabdodon, Tenontosaurus, Camptosaurus, Dryosaurus, Hypsilophodon, and Lesothosaurus. If you don't admit common ancestry, nothing in paleontology is going to make sense, because nothing in paleontology makes sense except in light of evolution. Well, this takes us from Cotosaurus through Mutaburosaurus. 
Next time we will review from Nanosaurus through Pentaceratops. By now I'm starting to get a sense of direction for this channel. In a few more episodes we'll be done with our initial review of the Dinosaur Encyclopedia. Next I want to create some original deep dives into dinosaur clades. For example, Salurosauria, Ceratosauria, Ornithopoda. Let me know in the comments if you have thoughts you'd like to share. I hope you have enjoyed the Softly Spoken Science Podcast. Good night.